it mean to be a good neighbor? Well, we have community development specialist of Greene County, David Burton, here to join us. Hi, David. Hi, glad to be here. Glad to have you here. So you're telling me that you want to be an engaged neighbor rather than a good neighbor. Tell me why. Yeah, well, we, I've looked at some of the research in this area in the last five or six years about how people define a good neighbor. And then we ran our own research project here in Southwest Missouri. We gave people traits to pick from. And the most prominent trait that would make someone a good neighbor is someone who's quiet and someone who respects my privacy. Or in other words, someone who's quiet and leaves me alone. Okay. And that's kind of in the American culture what good neighbor has come to mean. Mm -hmm. And so that's really not what's best for our culture, or our community, or it's a form of government. And that's why we've moved toward that word of engaged. We don't want you to just be quiet and leave people alone mm -hmm. around you. Okay, so you don't want to just be there, you want to be engaged in their lives yeah. in a sense. How does someone engaged do that? in lives, engaged in community, uh, both. I mean, this mm -hmm. does not, etiquette still applies here. This does not mean being obnoxious by any means, but it begins by learning your neighbor's names and finding reasons to use their names. And uh, only 18% of Americans will say they know the names of their eight closest neighbors and that they've spoken to them in the last month. Wow. 18%. And in some pockets, it's lower than that. So that's one of those steps toward being an engaged neighbor. Learn the name, use the names. And that can be a conversation. It can be just incorporating them into your life in some way. Uh, that's the first step toward being an engaged neighbor. So it's literally as simple as just learning the name, knowing who they are. You don't necessarily have to be on their doorstep every single day. Oh, no, no, by any means. In fact, and, and I had that moment where I realized my story was... Uh, that I had let people move in and out from around me and hadn't even bothered to get to know their name. And, really? And there was really just one family we interacted with at that point. And I thought, man, I should be doing better than that. And uh, I would have told you I was a good neighbor because I was quiet and left them alone. And But the opposite of loving your neighbor is not hate. The opposite is apathy. And I just had apathy. I didn't bother to get to know them. But that first step was knocking on some doors for me, that's the way I went about it, and introducing myself and learning and finding ways to use their names. And who knows, you might gain a friend. Uh, we have actually gained a friend. And using those names is a big step. I mean, there's a big difference to waving at your neighbor across the street and saying, hey, Matt, versus, hey, you. I mean, <laughs> everybody loves the sound of their name, right? They just, and so it's these steps that you can take that develop a positive relationship with your neighbors. And then there's really uh, power in that for the neighborhood. There's power in the social capital that's developed out of that. And that's all part of being more engaged in your neighborhood and community. So you gain some friends and you might even gain, you know, some help along the way too. Say you need them to watch your dog or you need them to water your plants when you're gone. Absolutely. And your neighbors are often your first responders. Mm -hmm. When there's an accident, there's that. I mean, we, we've all been able to help each other when somebody's gone on a trip. You need that type of connection. And really, we've been able to talk about difficult things, you know, in the, in the community and elsewhere. And that's really what the history of America has been. That circle of neighbors was really who we talked through some of these difficult challenges, formed ideas around it. We've lost the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. and But we have seen our own neighborhood by trying to be more engaged. It has caused some of our neighbors to be more civically involved as well. And that creates a community. It creates a community. And every community needs you know, volunteers, people that are going to be active, people that will serve on a city council, things like that. That's all part of that engagement that we're talking about. Well, David, this is some great advice. And if you guys have any more questions on Good Neighbor Week, please go to ky3.com. David, thank you so much. Thank you.